Welcome to Talking Swish. This is episode 10 for us. I'm Larry Fields here along with Steven Dykeman. Um, Steven, how does it feel that we've got 10 episodes under our belt now? Well, really cool. Um, and we have a, a really special guest that uh, we'll, we'll introduce in a little bit here. But first, let's... Uh, so last episode, we talked about how we were going to do the uh, the Legacy event this weekend. Um, and it's kind of funny, before we even did the Legacy event, you know, I haven't really felt like I've seen you much this week, Larry. You've kind of been camping out in my basement. So why don't you kind of oh. talk to our viewers <laughs> about about uh, what what we got into uh, last Saturday. Um, yep, um, we went on a little tubing trip. Um, we had some unforeseen circumstances come where I got a little banged up, um, so I haven't been very mobile this week. <laughs> Yeah, Larry, Larry and I both haven't been moving around too much this week. I got really, really bad sunburns in multiple uh, spots, which really sucked. So I wasn't uh, super mobile, and Larry has a massive cut on one of his legs and a lot of bruising. So yeah, uh, yeah, that's uh, kind of what we've been up to. But yeah, let's um, so let's kind of review that legacy event. Um, um so yeah. Probably would went a little bit better if I wasn't sitting in pain because it was very painful to sit in a chair yeah. on Sunday. Um, I yeah. did the best I could with it. Mm -hmm. I, I was actually one through a, a good portion of it, then I ran into like a blue red Delver mirror that was playing Bell and Revelers. I just couldn't handle that. Yeah, yeah, a little. It's kind of the similar similar things with me. Also, just um, being not the most familiar with the moto controls, playing Gak, which I don't think was as good of a choice as Delver would have been by any means. Um, of course. Um, but, and that comes with um, experience on <clears throat> handling Moto with mm -hmm. those kind of decks. Like, I played um, Delver myself on Sunday and I There's a lot of matches where I was yeah. down to like five, seven minutes at the end. And that's with me knowing, like doing a lot of auto passing, things like that. Finding my shortcuts that I'm used to doing. Yeah. And if you're not used to those kind of things, it is going to be quite difficult. Yeah, I ended up playing um, Hogak, which was... I think fine. Um, I think Hogak's a really good deck right now still. Yeah, I think it's um, solid. I think, um, I wish that we would have known a little more about uh, Legacy Dredge, because I feel like that actually would have potentially been a really good choice had we just had a little bit more knowledge on the archetype in Legacy. That kind of uh, brings me into um, what we're going to talk about today. So today, uh, we are we have a very special guest, a uh, Dredge master really especially in modern um yeah. and which is going to be really cool for me because i don't i don't really know much about dredge i've pl watched some other people play it a little bit yeah um but i've like never honors a very yeah big, yeah connor Lally, guy, yeah, huge dredge. huge dredge guy and as you um, know I, that dredge is um actually how i was able to make my first pt to some previous one in phoenix not the online one of course but and that was with dredge i won I went to a modern um, GP, um, it was in um, Columbus, and then that Sunday, I didn't do well with Mono Red Prowess, so I just went and I played the deck that I've been playing for months at that point. Yeah. And that all came from actually subscribing to um, our guests on Patreon, because he does, I showed you some of the cyborg guides he does, like how they're so detailed. So focused on making you better, giving yeah, you an idea. Generally, the best sideboard guide I've ever looked at like, by far. Tons that's how of I've information. Thought, like, tons of information. Um, I feel like if you really want to understand the deck, he he does a great job of of um, talking about it and and giving you insights. But yep. yeah, with, with that being been, said, why don't yeah, you? and we've been playing a little phone tag because he has been also getting ready for the PT finals this week. Yep. Um, so it's understandable, and he's over in um, Poland, which we have a little time difference. Yep. But um, without further ado, our guest is Sodek, a master of modern dredge um, and Vengevine too. I will say, I think I think I would classify him as both. Yeah. We're gonna go ahead and bring him on. All right, Sodek, how are you doing today? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, fine, thanks. And hello, everyone listening to, to our podcast. Nope. So um, I know we we talked um, a little bit briefly before we um, started this um, conversation. Um, you got the PT coming up, uh, and that's tomorrow, correct? Uh, like, depends on your time zone, okay. hard to say exactly. Uh, but it will start in like uh, 46 hours from now, Saturday. Uh, okay. My It will be my, uh, my 8 p.m. Sorry, sorry, 6 p.m. Okay. 6 p.m. Saturday, okay. Because it's Seattle time. Okay, oh, yeah, sorry. I wasn't aware if it started tomorrow or Saturday. I wasn't, mm -hmm. uh, like, our time would be Friday tomorrow, or I think it's the same I'm for you. I'm pretty sure it's Saturday, but uh, now I have to check it once again. Okay, that's <laughs> fair, that's fair, dude. Cool. You don't want to miss it. We've done that with events. 
<laughs> yeah, missing a PT. Yeah, that's something a, that's else. Really sad because I, I was testing like for like three hours, like close to full time, just to prepare. And to be honest, that was a very strange testing for me because I tested a lot and I tested different decks. Then uh, decided to play uh, Reclamation for Color. Okay. And this last week was terrible for Reclamation because Mono Red and Mono White. Uh, had great performances. Sandy oh. Dog was second in uh, SCG okay. and Mono White won Red, Red Bull Untapped. So, uh, last days on Magic Arena were flooded uh, by Agro decks, and I, I, I just don't know how I can realistically win enough to, to have uh, good percentages. And I'm a bit worried about my, uh, my deck choice. Okay. But what what I can do? I'm I'm not confident enough to pick a deck uh, without uh, major testing. For example, I played close to two hundred matches on Magic Arena. Okay. And uh, more than half of them were with uh, Timur or Four Color Reclamation. Sure. So com- compared to, for example, ten or fifteen games with Mono White. Okay. It wouldn't be wouldn't be that good. Yeah, that makes sense. So, so I'm. I'm not very happy about uh, the, the testing results, and I'm not uh, that confident that I usually are after this uh, this long and kind of semi-professional testing. Okay. So we'll see. Like maybe my pairings will, uh, will be better. I'm very well prepared for the mirror, yeah. and I'm and versus band. Uh, all I don't want to see is uh, is to is to find an. Uh, Agrodex and the rest should be fine. Okay, but, cool. But I have uh, some the to gamble. <laughs> right, right. Uh, no, um, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, you um to update the the arena PT that just happened was it like a month or so ago um, when they had like the four increments of PTs. Um, was that the first time you were ever um touching like reclamation? Because I I traditionally see you online playing mostly the modern format. So when I saw that you were doing exceptionally well at the standard PT, I wanted to reach out to you to ask how it felt to be playing Reclamation because that's like the complete opposite of Dredge. Actually, I like when I started my Magic, how to say that Magic career, uh, I was a combo player in card. And okay. that's also, also a funny story because uh, I started playing combo decks because I didn't know what is damage on the stack. Like I, uh, I le- learned playing Magic online on uh, free programs. Like nowadays it should be Cockatrice or Xmage. Yep. And we had our our Polish program to to play for free. And no one wanted to tell me what damage on the stack is. So I played only decks without any creatures, like <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> or Storm <laughs> or Nature or something like this. That's so funny, and, man. And I, I really loved it. And it took me a long time to to switch from pure combo decks. Like I played Second Sunrise, Storm, Ad Nauseum, okay. uh, Red Sky Ascendancy, and so on and so on. And uh, I, funny enough, in Dredge in Modern. Like I played a bit in Legacy, but after that I, I started playing Dredge uh, in Modern. And after playing Dredge, I realized that I don't understand how combat ma- map works. So I started <laughs> to work on it, playing. <laughs> other aggro decks in the format and right now I'm a bit of combo ish proactive player. Okay. I like to I like to do un- unfair things but I like to uh, end games as quickly as possible. Makes sense. And and to not play magic to be honest. Like um, yeah. for me the best magic is to to crush the opponent and not let them do their thing. And that's the the funniest thing in my opinion. Yeah. Ten free kills yeah no matter uh, what you're I'm doing wrong. no matter what you're doing winning is always fun right so <laughs> yeah kind of like for example winning in a control mirror is still uh, um, not as funny for me that's as, fair as when you can turn three on turn four okay <laughs> but what we can do and about yeah. team reclamation like i i i was got qualified for this event uh, winning ptq in brussels and i was playing dredge of course yep yep and uh, and uh, before co- uh, COVID, mm, the information was that we will play a player store uh, both standard and modern. So I was like, okay, I will start my standard, then uh, play Dresden modern, and I should be fine. 
but because um, there wasn't any option to play uh, in a regular way in paper, mm-hmm. uh, we had to play online and standard. So I started to test uh, thanks to catacombs uh, and my a lot of maybe not free time, but not uh, not having to 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 work like eight hours a day, uh, five days five days a week. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I could focus a bit on uh, on the format, and it turned out that Timor Re- Reclamation is a bit uh, like a combo deck from my old times before Dredge. So yep. I kind of like the deck. Uh, sadly, nowadays these Timor Reclamation decks are more about control and more about being a bigger control deck and having more of an advantage in the game. Yep. So it's not uh, the funniest magic for me to play. Okay. But uh, like uh, now I'm probably old enough to to accept that uh, not all games of magic I'm playing are are to make fun. But I also like to win. And like before the last weekend, uh, I was uh, very hard on the statement that uh, Timor like, is tier zero is the best deck. Now I'm not that sure. Yep. But what I can do. <laughs> right. For sure, for sure. Um, yeah, no, um, it's definitely a top deck, but yeah, um, based on what I've been seeing in the last week, based on Twitter and different, like, social media um, trends, just, like, that Mono White deck has been very popular this week. I will say yeah. that, like, I never expected that Mono White deck to... I thought maybe it was just, like, one of those, like, fluke-style decks when mm-hmm. I saw it do well at the Red Bull event yeah, or whatever. Yeah. And then people were talking about Crokies as another one that was very... Yeah. Is, was high on it when it first like started to yep. like gain some steam throughout the week. And remember at the beginning of the format, I was trying to make uh, mono, now I always try and make mono white work. Yeah, I love your... playing love playing white cards. Yeah. But um, you know, I'm not I'm not really that surprised it ended up being a good deck. There are definitely solid cards that the shell was there and it just needed someone to figure out how to build it. And yeah, it they were like... just doing it differently than what we were because we're yeah. trying to jam like the new cards like Bastry, the Planeswalker yeah. and everything and they just decided we're going to go straight very yeah. low to the ground one drops go into like Elephant. They're playing Banner and the Blessing. Yep. They're playing both of them so they have so many ways to make these one ones into actual yep. threats. Exactly. So instead of Bastry, they're playing Banner which is honestly just a, makes more sense anyway. Not only is it an Anthem, but it's an Anthem that lets you play an extra one drop on turn three. Yeah. Which is, I mean, that's a that's a big deal. It's just, you know, another another body to, to get pressure. And they're also playing all the creatures that when they die make another creature, yeah. which I wasn't doing. Which yeah, they, really just makes sense in the context of the format with all the shatters and and things like that, and then people sideboarding flame sweeps, which yeah. you know are a lot worse when your guys die and replace themselves. Exactly. Um. um yeah. And, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, that's the biggest problem with this matchup because, for example, I tried uh, many different sideboard strategies to stop mono white. Yeah. I tried, for example, love strike beast to have a five five blocker. Yep. And we'll just buy buy some time. And it was fine, but wasn't uh, spectacular. But be- uh, because or uh, because Mono White can just build a lot of huge uh, creatures and just rush me, just just attack once with losing one creature, then second one and kill me. And yep. I also saw trying uh, sweepers and like still I I will play two def- uh, deafening clarion yep. and two solar blazes. Yep. So four sweepers is a lot for uh, for a uh, reclamation player. But it's still, I don't feel it's enough. Like, sometimes if they have a slower draw and if they don't have enough creatures to, to replace themselves, maybe if you have two, two out of these four sweepers, you can win. Yeah. But outside of this, like, I'm losing every time to this one. It's just a horrible matchup for Reclamation. But I just hope that Bant Control will, uh, will keep them in check. That's fair. Yeah, or no. maybe not. You know. Yeah, you never know. <laughs> yeah, for sure. How do you feel about your um, Bant matchup with um, the Reclamation build? Uh, like, I feel that uh, my four color deck uh, is very similar. Like, uh, four color Reclamation decks are quite similar to Bant ones because we both play Uro, we both both play Teferi. Yeah. Uh, the difference is what, uh, and we all, we both play Grove Spiral and Chip Counter Magic. Yep. The only difference is what what is your payoff? Team Re- Reclamation is Reclamation plus Expansion Explosion. Also, I play Punketry because uh, the Returned King is just uh, busted. 
and upon yeah. a, upon t- so I'm I'm a proactive way, and I I I'm a little bit bigger because I have more mana to use because of reclamations. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, opponent has Elspeth conquers death and uh, some hydroid crazies actions and sometimes Nisas. Uh, not all of Lys are playing them. So generally speaking, in this semi mirror match, uh, the bigger deck should uh, should be well positioned, but it's it's not. As, as a big advantage as I, I I would like to have. Sure. I think it's a 55-45% for reclamation players, but it's very close. For example, like also your build matters because Aspect Conquer's Death is probably the, the most problematic card. Yes, it, it can destroy your reclamation so you don't have any, uh, any very powerful turns after you untap. And second, uh, like in two turns from casting it, it will return to ferry the board, and you 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 can't do anything about it. And yep. that's super irritating and sad. So so you have to play a lot of uh, hard counter magic because um, these games tends to go go long, and it's quite easy to have, for example, eight mana, play Elspeth, the conquer Zef, keep three mana to pay for Mist Altitude. And if you have only two negates, it's uh, uh, it's actually hard to counter the fairies, counter Nisas, and then counter uh, Aspect Conquest Death. So I'm playing two Dobbins Vitos and one negate just to have a little bit uh, better chances against Aspect Conquest Death because it's so irritating. On the other hand, if opponent spends five mana to cast it and you counter it for two, it opens uh, you. To, to play your big explosion and win the game on the spot. So, uh, so the, the most important thing probably is to just have a response to to Elspeth conquers death and of course the very earlier, but it's easier because of the mystical disputes mm-hmm. and uh, and some early creatures and that should be fine. Of course, both sideboard everything can happen. Some people are siding out on reclamations. Uh, some people are keeping all four of them. Yep. Uh, like some people are. Uh, are playing, for example, night bug ambushers or um, more cat cantri can read. Yep, cantrips. Or 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 any, any other strange stuff you can you can put from uh, from the sideboard, and it's quite hard to predict. Uh, thanks to open decks, it will be quite easier to guess what yeah. the opponent will want to do. Mm-hmm. But it's still a guessing game. Oh yeah, for sure. And it won't it won't be that easy to navigate. Like like this. Games will be a skill test, uh, a skill tester for sure. Nice. Yeah, and you're going to be cool. up against some of the very top talent because this is the PT Finals. They didn't have a bunch of last year's qualifiers for this one. Right. This is probably some of the best of the crop that you're going to play against. You yeah, got, absolutely. The NPL is going to be there. Rival is going to be there. All these great players, including yourself. So it's going to be interesting. I'm looking forward to watching some coverage like if they're doing. I'm sure. And it's going to be cool because this is the first PT they're actually doing on MTG Melee. Yeah. Um, which, which is, is all. Yeah, no. I've been impressed by the pro. So like Sir Brand Nelson is very, very yeah. big on it. Yeah, like, Melee is awesome as long as. The number crash. of players is not insanely high, and they are not all jamming the refresh button at the same time, yeah. and, and thus crashing <laughs> thus crashing the system. Yeah, we, we were um, in that re- first Red Bull event, and that was pretty miserable. And that was yeah. because, you know, people don't listen. People you know? don't listen. It's, it's also new to yeah. some people, right? You're not necessarily... You just want to play your match you're excited you just want to hit the refresh button or whatever yeah. and everyone's doing that at the same time it happens I get so it. I, I get it too and their, their um, servers wasn't prepared probably as well so yeah. but no i'm very impressed i'm looking forward to how it's going to um, perform this week yeah um, when they do now i have one more question about the so about four color reclamation in particular so obviously i would assume that uh, I've, I've played a little bit of Teamer, but not the four-color version. I assume the fourth color gives you advantages in the mirror and probably against Bant. What are the disadvantages, do you think, of playing the fourth color? Do you think there are no disadvantages? And uh, that's the funniest thing. You're, like, obviously, in Mirror, Teferi helps, and yeah. the is also good. But in my opinion, the biggest advantage is uh, that... Uh, you have a much better game versus non Grog Spiral decks because of Kenrit. Kenrit, the Rittered King, just can win games by itself. That makes sense. Like, I, ha- I, I had uh, games when, for example, opponent had like easy 20 plus power on board, and I had Kenrit and two reclamations. Oh, that's and brutal. I was gaining, I was gaining uh, <laughs> 20 life a turn. 
<laughs> that is so. Like I, I was playing the tower defense deck, and opponent tried to do something, and I just. Won. That's so, crazy, uh, man. That's the first thing. Also, solar place is really cool. Yeah. Uh, especially versus the like, outside mono white versus all other decks uh, in the format is is quite good. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, especially versus mono green because yep. uh, like. One of the biggest problems uh, for Team Reclamation was a very big Stone Coil Serpent. Yep. Because of its protection from multicolored. It, uh, you wasn't able to block it with Uro, you wasn't able to uh, expansion explosion it. Yep. Uh, and thanks to Solar Blaze, Solar, solar Blaze uh, means that, that uh, creatures are dealing damage to themselves. Yeah. So Solar Blaze kills Stone Coil Serpent, which is very important. Okay, yeah, that's uh, awesome. Okay. And yeah. Also, you have some Dev Dev Clarions and Dovin's Vito. Of course, Dov Dovin Dovin's Vito is also an important part because uh, uh, you can uh, play your threats earlier in a more proactive way. For example, like on turn, like all these mirrors are draw go, draw go, and until you don't have your land drop and you have to tap out first. Yeah. And usually that means that you lose because opponent will counter your play when play their play with counter backup. For example, reclamation, untap, and uh, games will spill out of control. Okay. But uh, but now, for example, if you have turn uh, ten five, you can safely play Uro, for example. Uh, if it gets countered, that's whatever. Uh, at least one counter from opponent's hand uh, will be kind of discarded. If it resolves, it's great because maybe it's your uh, next land drop, and you, you will have mana advantage later. Yeah. But because you have these two mana open with Dovin's Vito, that means that if opponent goes for a Wilder's Reclamation or a Prince Walker or anything else, you can play Dovin's Vito and opponent can't do anything about it. Yep. So, so you, you don't have to keep more mana to be able to win a counter magic war because Dovin's Vito wins it by itself. That makes a lot but of surprisingly, sense. Surprisingly, uh, Teferi was the weakest addition, in my opinion, at least. The, the weakest addition uh, to, like, Compared to what other white cards are giving to the deck. Okay. And that was that was the, that was my like obviously if you are playing thinking yeah for color reclamation you obviously are thinking about the fairy and of course it's a really good card. Yeah. Yeah. But based on how the games are playing, it's not as powerful as I would I would think it will be. Okay. So that that's kind of, kind of interesting. And of course the, the biggest problem in four color version is mana base. Like mana base is maybe not awful, it will be too too, too strong uh, to say this type of thing. But uh, like I'm a modern player in heart, and having uh, eight tap lands is a <laughs> is a disaster. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, like, I, I, every time I play a, a tap land in my mid game, I see my shark being uh, having one less power and toughness. That's so sad. <laughs> uh, or, or, I, or every time I'm, I'm, uh, I have, for example, one basic and like two, two top three lands and I can't play Girl Spiral uh, on turn two. That's also super sad. Uh, like this tempo swings in early turns can, can be a problem. Okay. So that's a problem. On the other hand, you can you can cycle this, uh, these lands more often. So it's not the end of the world. Uh, yeah. But uh, if I have to say one thing that it's worse than in regular reclamation, it will be for sure mana base. Okay, that makes sense. All right, uh, so you talked about how you, at heart you're a modern player, so I feel like now might be a good time to kind of, should we transition into talking about some dredge, you think, oh, Larry? Oh, yeah, I yeah. think it's time. I know work. you've just been itching to start oh, yeah. talking about well, some dredge. Well, everybody knows it's probably my favorite deck, though, yeah. that I, like, I went from a burn player to, like, instantly loving the, the whole dredge game. Like, I never actually, I played against playing a dredge because I played Blue, Blue Red Phoenix, and at that time, Blue Red Phoenix and dredge are, like, the top two de yep. buggy man decks, yep. like, running against each other yep, absolutely um and then i started to have to learn like being in the driver's seat the dredge yeah way different and like the dredge mechanic is such an interesting mechanic that they printed like i can now understand why people say it was a, in people's words that it was a mistake mm -hmm. yeah. quotation marks um, i personally think it was a blessing they should do more <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah but so, like, um, tell us a little bit about the, what drew you into the dredge mechanic. Like, what you said you played a lot of combo. What got you to like playing modern dredge and excelling with it where you have? Um, like, many people uh, already asked me this question, and 
after all these years, and I'm playing Magic for 12 years, I guess, or maybe okay. even 13, uh, I still don't know exactly how to respond to this question. Okay. Because, uh, like, I'm asking my, I, I was asking myself why I'm, I like these combo decks, and and now I, I like dress so much, and I came to conclusion that I really love repetitiveness. Okay. Yeah. So all in English, I guess. That makes sense. Uh, I guess yes, yeah. And I, I really love to to do all maybe not all the same, but um, I want my games to look every time the same, like every time the same, and uh, when I'm winning, of course. Uh, and Dredge gives me this uh, opportunity. It's the only deck in in the format which, um, if when given time, will see whole library. And in my opinion, that's, that's, that's super cool because you can build your own all game plans, not based on what you draw, but based on uh, what else do you have in your deck. Yeah. And it's quite easy to, for example, flip your whole library uh, on turn four. Turn five, turn five is even easier. But for example, if you go turn one, anything turn to reunion into turn three ox, turn four ox. Yep. That's whole. That's whole library. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's oh fair. yeah. We've been there, done that. We. I've. I've played a little bit with the ox and stuff lit recently, and cards will help you like get through your library quick. I've won with the deck many times with no cards in library. Like it happens. And like yeah. you said, like if you like a deck that just does the same thing. Like, regardless of what you're doing, like, I know me personally, the reason I gravitated to so much towards dredges, the biggest thing I hated in Magic is mulligans. Like, mm -hmm. I hate going down cards and being stressed that, me too. oh, <laughs> I, That's funny. I hate being like, yeah. oh, I'm at a disadvantage. Now with dredge, you feel so comfortable, like, mulling the, f mulling the six, mulling the five. Because it just um, doesn't matter. I prefer not to mull the four <laughs> and three, like, yeah. but I've done it and done really well the piece. Yeah. The PTQ I won, for example, like I played against some um, five color Niv and I mulled down the three in one game one easily. Like, yeah, not saying that match is good, that's another discussion for an for later, son. But yeah, just saying, like, it can happen. Like, it's the absolutely, it's one of the two best uh, mulligan decks in the format, in my opinion, between that and Tron. Yeah, I think um, it's probably think a lot Dredge, better than Tron. I think Dredge is even better. Yeah, than, oh, I agree. I would say that too. Because Tron, like. Sometimes Tron just doesn't find it, man. Like I've played, I've played a good amount of Tron. Now, to be fair, most of my Tron playing was before the new Mulligan rule, so it was fair. a while ago. Talk about um, the deck that got the, a really good benefit from the Mulligan rule. Oh yeah, Mulligan for sure. Rule. But Oof. there were like a lot of my losses in tournaments were just rounds where in two games, like I mulled to four or five and just couldn't couldn't set up Tron. Like it just yeah. wasn't there. And yeah. you can only go so low with with Tron. But with Dredge, you know, you can go quite low. And oh, yeah. like like Sodex saying, like the consistency and repetitiveness is just like so crazy. Yeah, the deck just does exactly what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Like you could play a nine round tournament, all your game ones are probably gonna be like pretty close to the same. Like you know you have one agenda. Post board the deck gets a little interesting. I will say that there's like moments where you are playing a little bit different, um, than you would in game one, but we'll get into that. Um yeah, no, I just think Dredge is just like an awesome mechanic that you can just do your thing. You play. It's honestly like you're not. You're just at home play testing. Like you know, was um turn for goldfish. Yeah, goldfishing. Playing goldfish or whatever. That's solitaire. what dredge game ones are. Yeah, because you're playing goldfish with. Yeah, goldfish or solitaire. Like, and I also like it similar to what he's saying about combat, man. I like dredging because I can just be like, all right, turn it sideways. Yeah, attack everything. And the funny thing is, even what they block, you're going to get it back later yeah. anyway. Half the only the time, cards so. you usually don't get it back is like Narcomedia. Yeah, the 1-1 like, one, one flyer, like, whatever. Yeah. Or us. For sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, funny, funny thing about dredge is that when, like, when I started playing dredge, when, like, it was uh, when Price to Malcolm was printed. Like, I, I jumped into dredge train instantly. Like even before Kataric Reunion was printed, and my friends told me that uh, that Dredge is the best deck to learn combat math because uh, if you mess up something, you just play a land and you can repeat next turn. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. So, so that, that, that was a funny thing to learn this Navagam. Yes, but I, the, also the, 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 the thing I, that I really love in Dredge is that it's. Uh, it, it can uh, act as very different deck uh, before and post sideboard. For example, you can very easily switch from your game one very hard rush deck to game to feel close to being a control 
for example, versus creature decks, you can just uh, play more on conflagrates, more on other uh, other removal spells, and just when opponent doesn't have any other resources because you you killed everything. You will just kill with some random creatures you, you returned in the process. And uh, for example, you can switch from very hard aggro deck and uh, act as a tempo deck, for example, versus Tron, when the fear of Ugin is real. All you need to do is to set up your turn to power, attack one or two times, sorry, one, once or twice. English is hard. And, uh, and then bur burn the opponent out. Mm -hmm. Out of nowhere. So that, uh, like, even if you have the same 75 cards, uh, your game plan uh, and your play style can change. So that means that um, being able to react to what your opponent is doing, not e not even by changing your deck list, but um, by uh, changing how you are using your cards, sure. uh, is huge in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, because uh, that means that it's very hard to surprise Dredge. Uh, of, of course, Lane of the Void can surprise you, <laughs> but uh, but Dredge can react to nearly everything yeah. that happens on the, on the battlefield. Uh, so of, and obviously Dredge uh, changed uh, a lot uh, in the last two years, Yeah. because like there was a creeping printed, yep. uh, being printed, uh, then also Pagonas. Also, we had a Hogak summer for, for three months. Oh yep. yeah, good uh, Also, Forgotten Cave was a, was a really uh, really important addition because before Oxo Pagonas, X was fully centered on Life from the Lotus Forgotten Cave plan. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, but Forgotten, Cave, free Forgotten Cave was was uh, was a regular thing to do. Uh, so uh, and even now, like. It's still a discussion which version is better, if if Dredge players should play Bloodcast or Silver Smoke Cool. It's not, um, it's very hard to say uh, which of these cards uh, is actively better than another. Okay. Uh, it's more like Silver Smoke Cool uh, gives you better Goldfish uh, actions and more turn free kills. On the other hand, uh, Bloodcast gives you much um, more action versus heavy removal decks, for example, like strange blue red versions uh, or blue white with verdicts. Yeah. Uh, or Bloodcast uh, plays a bit better versus soft hate like surgical extraction of relic of progenitors because of how it uh, how landfall interacts with fishlands. So, uh, so I I really like that Dredge can. Like there's no, for example, compared to Bern, which has only one version to build it, maybe you can play a bit more sitting blazes or sitting blasts, and that's it. Uh, or uh, maybe regular Tron is not the best idea because of Karl. Uh, but oh, for example, Infect. Infect can can can't do anything else than what what it's doing uh, in his plan A. Yeah. And the dredge uh, is not this type of story. Dredge can easily adapt in a uh, in a much better way than most of other decks in the format. It makes yep. sense. No, I agree. Um, and that, that's what I was mentioning earlier. Because I actually, this ain't from me. This is actually reading all of um, Thonix information. Because I've been, like, when I first started playing the deck. And I ain't gonna lie to you. The first event I played Dredge at, I was complete garbage with yeah, it. Like, yeah, for oh, sure. Oh, I man. got crushed. And then um, a good, some buddies of mine was like, hey... Do you ever um follow Sodic stuff? Uh, and I had no idea who Sodic was at the time. Like, yeah, I never really touched Dredge. I don't really, I really didn't follow like Magic Twitter or anything like that. And so they sent me. They're like, "Oh, sub to his uh, Patreon." And I was like, "Okay." So I checked out. And then uh, the first sideboard guy that came across, and I <laughs> that gave me so much information, which I want to go more about that kind of stuff later. But it gave me so much information and just reading all these uh, stuff he would post on there. And it actually helped me progress just seeing all this. Like, And then he would do videos here yeah. and there. Like, just so much. And I realized you quickly saw, like, oh, I am bad because this is exactly what I'm doing wrong. We, mm -hmm. we can fix this now because yeah. now we can address these yeah, yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And the evolution of Dredge, like, for the most part, like, it's evolved so much. Just in the little time that I've been playing it, I have never played Dredge when we had Looting or Troll. Yeah. So I've never got to do any of that. <laughs> yeah. I came right after that. Okay. Um. So um, I've been playing it like we have like the straight up blood gas creeping chill for Gone Cave while yep. I'm doing awesome, and then we started to like 
Ox came out, and it feels like every couple sets now that there's a new breakout card. Another that, busted card yeah, that Dredge can Because now we have the Ghoul, for example. I haven't yeah. touched the Ghoul yet. I haven't done no Dredge since um since Ox came out. So I, I have a question. So are so so like you just mentioned there are I think I think you were saying there are two different builds. Is one of one of them is a blood gas build and the other one is a ghoul build? They yes. don't they don't play both? No. 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 Okay. From what I've been seeing um from his um list and some other lists, so I was like, it's usually one or the other. Okay. And it, it makes sense because I, I think the ghoul list is also playing that little lightning helix card if yeah. I'm correct, Sodic. The, yeah, the, yeah. The, I don't like, know the name. Fighting Phoenix, exactly. Like, uh, like this, this discussion uh, is probably taken from wrong direction. Sorry, from wrong wrong point point of view. Because you are only thinking about uh, blood gas versus silver small goal. Sure. And it's not uh, it's not the best thing to to show the problem. Okay. The the biggest problem with uh, rebuilding the dredge was the addition of oxophagonas. Oxophagonas like previously the dredge was a kind of aggro deck which uh, which was grinding really well. Played uh, life of the loams with forgotten case had conflict kids from time to time and so on and so on. Yeah. And with the addition of oxophagonas, all we want to do is to resolve turn three oxophagonas and dredge fifteen. To find as uh, much power as you can, sure. mm -hmm. and and flood the board and win on turn four. But if you are really lucky, you can do it with Katai Union on turn two and Kino on turn three. That happens, and that's nice. And the biggest question right now is how to fully support the Oxplan, because for example, Oxyphagonas means that uh, like his ability uh, uh, forces you to discard your hand and like dredge fifteen. Yeah. Dredging fifteen is fun. And nice, but on the other hand, there's a big problem. For example, you you are forced to discard all your lands. That that's uh, that matches up very poorly with your blood gas, for example. Sure. So now you have two lines. You can go for oxyphagonas and hope to find your one of Dark Moon Salvage and still have your uh, your land drop available. Okay. To, to return blood gas uh, or waste the turn play life from the loam. To return blood gas, okay, yep. which is kind of slow, and mm -hmm. that's the biggest uh, stretch of silver slot cool because it's another creature which can return from your graveyard for free. So if you cast your oxyphagonas, you don't need to hit anything else on the board. You don't need to pay mana for anything else. All you need to do is to hit creeping chill in this turn and goals, and yep. these goals. We trigger your amalgas, which will leave their on opponents answer, then you can untap it with, with huge board and attack. Exactly what Fox did wants to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, as the, so if, if magic was only about goldfish, silver small ghoul would be much better than bloodcast. But sadly, people are playing hate, and that's not fun. And I would love all all uh, uh, players listening to this podcast do not play grave hate because I don't like playing against <laughs> grave hate. <laughs> yeah, fair. Uh, but uh, because how games are, are playing out, for example, Ethercast is quite popular. Ether, like suddenly Ethercast versus Dredge is a really good card, and suddenly uh, if someone is can is someone counters your Oxyphagonas. It can be a big problem to, to set up a, rele a relevant board early. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you expect a lot of problems like soft counter magic, like soft grave hate, for example, if you have a uh, relic of programming on board, it will be very hard for you to collect eight cards to to pay for escape cost. Sure. Mm -hmm. So so there are many many uh, different little different things which can go wrong. So maybe. Uh, we can accept that, yeah, sure, uh, Oxophagonas turns won't be that powerful, and we will have only that copy to return normal camps, but we'll have more play if something uh, will go wrong. Okay. That's uh, like that's still a discussion on, for example, Dredge Discord, or like in this top pro level, like like top five, peop uh, five Dredge players in the world are, are still not sure. Sure. I'm in a cool camp because I want to... I want to goldfish, uh, and and still there's a chance that even if uh, you can't resolve your ox, like different because of counter magic or soft hate or anything else, uh, it's still possible to hit your creeping chili and goal. You just have little less chances to do this, but it's still still doable. 
Also, you can you can support your goals with smiting helixes yeah. and try to to return them that way. So, like in my opinion, hate happens and you you should play around it if you can. But on the other hand, uh, you can't live in fear that your hate will destroy you all the time. Sure. And it's better to force an opponent to have it, yeah. not to. <clears throat> Decrease your chances to win by playing a worse version of deck. Okay. So that's my that's my philosophy. Uh, and to be honest, uh, the, like this month, I like played three weeks straight play uh, with the standard on Magic Arena, and I played modern showcase with Adnosium, my second deck. Um, because like Adnosium is a, like for me, it's a cheating. If you are playing your counter, if you are playing your stuff, you are playing your combo. If it resolves, you win. If not, you are losing. And that's cool. <laughs> that's <laughs> fine, not, yeah. not, not, not a, lot, a lot to think about and not a lot to, to analyze. So, so like after Pro Tour Fane, uh, players the finals, I will uh, work a lot on dredge builds. Maybe even we'll touch uh, crab fine. Maybe, maybe we'll find a a really good uh, list to this. Uh, also, maybe maybe I can revisit the rest of Pioneer. Uh, like obviously, I I won't have infinite time to to do all of these things. But yeah. I, I want to do this because I think that people, sorry, players don't uh, like players don't like Pioneer because of combo decks being a thing. But the reality is that uh, people, sorry, players playing uh, Pioneer leagues are, are telling that it's fun and competitive environment with not only free decks but much more of them. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so maybe we'll try to, to use Silver Smoke Cool because it works pretty well with Uro, so that that should that should work. Yeah. But you know, like uh, now I'm, I'm playing players, players to finals and later I will think about uh, other stuff. Right, and then the Pioneer wasn't that like the the funniest name of a deck was Georgeless Dredge. Yeah, I never played the deck myself, but I I know the the whole like concept because I had some buddies that build it because they played Dredge in Modern. Um, no, um, they they had the goal I could actually imagine being good in that like kind of art time. Um, I wanted to ask you more about the Venge. I never actually played Vengevine. Um, what was like the pros and cons in your opinion of playing Vengevine compared to regular Dredge? Um, like I think now, like un unless something very strange happens, Dredge is a probably better Vengevine deck. Okay. Um, one big reason, in, uh, and it names Octopagodas, and several smaller uh, arguments. Okay. First, Dredge plays much better as <coughs> Blood Moon, and Grab by the to it. Second, um, Dredge needs, uh, sorry, Dredge has more consistency, uh, than Crampine. On the other hand, Crampine has much more uh, possible power on turn 2, for example, if you are lucky and you flip your two Vengevines uh, from turn 1 Hadron Crab. Sure. And turn 2, two creatures, you are just winning on the spot. But uh, also, that's the, the also very big problem with Vengevine. You can play only for Vengevines because of rules of Game of Magic. Yeah. And um, like Vengevines are much better than anything else you are doing. Makes sense. So, uh, so um, it's very hard also to balance your flip cards and payoff because you you don't have any treasure, you don't have chains. You you will draw a lot of cards naturally. Yeah. So if you break the balance between uh, certain cards and your payoff, you can too often end with a, a lot of payoff cards in hand. Or on the other hand, miss a lot of cards, but but. Uh, but you won't find anything uh, to work with. Yeah. So, so the build is interesting. Like I'm also thinking about uh, Fiend Artisan. Like it's the new card from Ikoria. Like uh, two mana, both black and green hybrid, one one, uh, and has plus one plus one for each creature oh. <clears throat> in the graveyard. Yeah, Fiend Artisan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, Fiend I Artisan think, looks really cool. I think cool. this card can can revitalize the archetype. I because believe you it. can just sacrifice uh, uh, Stitcher suppliers to find Hadron Crafts. Ooh, that's that, nice. Yeah. That should be should be a nice nice addition. That's actually quite good. That's really sweet. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's some good um, lines right there. Like I wouldn't even thought about that. Like yeah, that's just some pure value. Like Stitcher supplier, you get the mill like die trigger along with getting a crab on the yeah. board, which makes that deck so much more explosive. I've actually 
have, I'm like 0-3 lifetime playing Dredge against Vengevine. Like, I do not have a good, like, success rate. They're always so much faster than I am. Sure. Um, every time I see it, it looks super impressive, but I've never pulled the trigger cause, just because I like playing traditional Dredge. Yeah. Um, so I was always wondering what the pros and cons were, because I know at a time... Um, like Dredge is being played, but also Benchvine was pretty up there too. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd run into it at, at least once a tournament for like the longest time, like for like a little span. Like we had a bunch of team tournaments, and I'd yeah. always like go. I would lead off my turn, and then they they did go and lead with Crab, and I knew that it was one of two things. And then they target themselves, and I know it's one of one thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, once, yeah. yeah you I was know like, what's oh, when they target it's, themselves, it's Hogakless Hogak. Yeah, pretty like, much. That's yeah. exactly what that deck is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. If I have Venge of Ice, it can be a problem. Also, uh, for, like there, like these meters, uh, like Dredge versus Crabvine is really hard to play because uh, yeah for example if you both have your good openings and you both have like similar creep chill numbers mm -hmm. uh, it's quite easy to to step in a board style for example you played your oxophagonas you, you dredged found some creatures opponent found some creatures played this merfolk secret keeper which is 04 and blocks uh, your amalgams really well oh, so you yeah. can attack Merfolk Secret Keeper is an impressive card in that matchup. In I believe opinion. it. Yeah. Yeah, and and this matchup can can easily end in a board style, and suddenly in a, in a board style situation, Crabvine is a uh, has a huge huge advantage because uh, they can glimpse glimpse the unthinkable a dredge player and to mill them out. I see. Or or you or use Hadron Crab Triggers to to mill them. Okay. So yeah. that's that's a that's a big problem so so dredge needs to be an aggressor in the matchup and uh, like obviously crabby is a very high variance deck if they have their garbage draw it's very easy to beat them yeah but if they have their good draw with like one venture vine plus for example one amalgam one something then if they up it, it, it can be challenging to to pirate for early and if they set up defenses that, that can be a problem so so crabbine has explosiveness but uh, it's not very repetitive. Like sure. I'm, there are some players who who love this type of uh, go big or go home decks, and that's fun. And I, I really like that that this type of decks uh, are uh, sort of exists. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, I think that Fint, Fint Artisan uh, in this type of uh, um, very go big or go home decks will give some consistency because you will be able to to sacrifice your suppliers. Like to to find some crabs to keep going, and that that should give more more flipped cards uh, on average after turn four. So so it should uh, give on average more power on board on turn four, which 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 is exactly what this deck wants to do. Um, yeah, like the biggest advantage of playing crab fine is probably playing force of negation in the sideboard. Sure. In yeah. My opinion that the, that's the the biggest uh, the, the biggest pro. Plus, um, to blink Crabvine. Sure. Uh, so, so if if first negation is too very well positioned, for example, if in your lo local meta game, everyone are on Storm or Neo Brand or like any kind of combo garbage, uh, just go for Crabvine mm -hmm. and, and set up your force of negations by plus some other uh, cheap counter magic, and you should be fine. Right. Um. Yeah, um, like I said, Vengevine is just... They're, they're definitely two different decks, and I forgot all about the Force of Negation thing. I, they, yeah. I never had it played against you, so it slips in my mind. But obviously, I've seen the list, and I know it's there, but it just wasn't a fresh thought. Um, yeah, it'd be cool to see if um, there's a, a way that Vengevine actually could get some legs going in the future. And talk about the Fiend Arts, and actually is a very cool um, angle that you can attack that deck with. Sweet card, um, for sure. And Dredge, I'd really like to actually... We, I was talking to... Um, even hear about doing some dredge videos or something like that in the near future uh, i don't know what the list we could do i know the last time i played dredge um it was at some like nrg events and stuff which is in the midwest here in the states um and i actually got the idea from oh well, not really the idea but i took the concept from from brian hat Hato, i believe his own last name is okay um he was doing more blue based dredge like playing like uh, memory sluice yeah uh, um things like that um tome scours and stuff like that just trying to be super explosive with 
with the ox when it first came out and it, it was cool and everything but it still felt a little bit fragile um which did become a little problematic because you weren't playing like some of the other good cards that you could have been playing at traditional dredge plays um yeah, and, yeah like I, I just had the idea and uh, like obviously your your good draws are much better because on average your for example your merchant like if you compare merchant to for example tom scour Tom Scaver will always win five cards mm -hmm. and like will always be the best possible merchant because the best possible merchant is going haggle into with uh, stick with him to dredge five and yeah. that's the same. Yeah. And but but you have like one card more in your graveyard and you don't have to combo a merchant with him to, to get the, the effect. Yeah. But uh, th there are two problems. The first is mana base. Because the deck needs to be mono red because of Vox of Agonas and Conflagrate. Uh, the deck needs to splash like from below, and you need to have your green mana like in nearly all hands. Like, like nowadays with Vox of Agonas and Ghoul, do not have to like all you need to do is just keep dredging. So if you have plans, you will eventually find your first Ghoul. Your first Ghoul will find your more uh, sorry first Ox will find your more Oxes, and you should go off. From there, yeah. But but generally speaking, you want you want your green mana too. And suddenly, if you, for example, uh, have this heavy mulligan hands, and you need to decide if you want to go for uh, uh, steam vents uh, just to be able to maybe play your blue spells if you draw them. Yeah, it's kind of bad. That's the first problem. And the second problem is how the dredge mechanic works because you have a dredge a dredger in graveyard. And you dredge it to hand. So uh, if you, for example, do some, like two dredge actions, like maybe not in because it's, it's too easy, but like you go for life long long or attack, and you happen to uh, uh, to break uh, your dredge chain. Like by breaking a dredge chain, I mean that you dredge and you 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 won't find any more dredgers to, to keep going. Sure. So you need to restore your dredge chain. It's much better to play discard draw spell than to flip random cards. Because, like, if you are restor restoring your uh, discard, your dredge chain, uh, you, have, you have guaranteed dredger uh, in your hand to to discard to to keep going. So your number of dredgers increased. I maybe I'm not saying it very clearly, but uh, your your chances to hit your dredgers in like this post, for example, post of Oxophagonas or like this meet meet the dredge actions after your chain is broken mm -hmm. uh, is increasing also your keeps are are better because you obviously need to keep katarik reunion because it's the best enabler even if not two mana yeah uh, but your katarik reunion needs to have uh, dredges in hand and uh, like all meat spells are uh, sorry um, does uh, <sighs> does not need uh, Sorry, they don't need to. Oh, you're fine, man. Uh, they don't need any dredgers in hand, they just randomly need cards. Okay. So, so your keeps are more fragile on this position. Okay. Uh, and not, not obviously post sideboard games when you can't discard the draw to, to find your answers. For example, like lightning axe or uh, or claims or post scissors, like all these of these cards to Stuff find. From taking the natural draw all over doing the dredge because you're trying to find your low sideboard slot cards. They're very important like decisions. Oh yeah. And the deck is a a lot of people say uh, like to tell me that the deck on um, just uh, it's a self operating deck where it, no, no, no. Another, it's very obviously not true. Term, um, yeah. People tell me it's like oh that's a skillless deck. Which, also very obviously uh, not true. Obviously that's, untrue that's, because that's, if it was skillless I wouldn't have got crushed at the beginning. Yeah. Um <laughs> That's the most ambitious uh, statement I've ever seen. Uh, sorry, I ever had. Um, like dredge is very easy to play when you also always keep seven and when you flip exactly what you want all the time and your dredge chain is not broken uh, and so on and so on. The real challenge in dredge is how to play against soft hate. Yes, against hard hard hate is quite easy. You have a response and win and uh, and have a chance to win. Or you don't have a response and use. Yeah. Uh, but against soft hate, there's a lot of many uh, many small decisions uh, to make. Mm -hmm. Also, even even in some in, in like cold fishing, it's not very. E for example, turn one for players 
it's quite obvious. You, you play Shikor, you, if you have, if you don't have Shikor, play Hagel, that's it. Turn two, it's still quite easy. You play Reunion if you have it, if not, generally Loam or some other actions. But all sequencing from turns three to five, if you don't have something, like even even like Counter Magic or anything like this, is so challenging. Like, I, I, lost, I lost so many games because of this, like when I was learning the deck. Mm-hmm. Like I, uh, I live in Poland, so so it, it was quite easy for me to to earn money from being a grinder. Yeah. Uh, on Magic uh, Magic Online, and like where the times where they they were friendly and competitive leagues, uh, it was quite uh, quite nice to grind leagues. Yeah. Uh, from this, and there was a time when I was a full time dredge player. Like I played 60, 80 leagues a month. Wow. Plus modern challenges, plus other other things. Yeah. And and I slowly learned all these lines. Like for example, when you want to play Synquity, when you when you want to go fully uh, all in. For example, uh, all decisions about Katari Krogan. You ha- you have Synquity, play from the loam and price uh, price some other hand. What do you discard? Synquity is an easy one, but depends on the matchup. Depends on who's the beat down in the matchup. Depends on how. Your dress chain is important. How your clock is important, and so on and so on. Mm-hmm. Your decisions can always be a bit different. It's like it's not it's not a plan when all you are doing is to maximize damage. For example, turn two you play Aetheron of the Great Level Go, and that's it. Or you turn one Goblin Guide, or turn three oh I that damage sever the critics Boros Charm Go, <laughs> and. Uh, like, it's not an experience with Dredge. Like, nowadays it's easier because of Oxofagonas, and if you don't know exactly what to do, casting of Oxofagonas, if you can, is usually a good answer. Yeah. But, uh, but still, getting there through soft hate is, is a challenge, in my opinion. Sure. And, uh, and it's quite easy to mess up uh, games if if you happen to, to for example, choose a rock line or play, play around uh, rock cards. For example, playing around, um, sorry, versus red green mid range. Yeah. The decision to lighting axe Arbuler or try to wait to, to kill scavenging goals. Or, for example, you want to fully commit your graveyard because the more things you do early, the less scavenging goals early is, uh, is relevant. For example, if you are going all in to, to kind of prevent us or clotes to being relevant, then your relic of progeny, uh, opponent's relic of progeny is going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. And so on and so on. There are many, many small decisions you, you need to um, uh, you need to make. I know that makes a lot of sense. Um, Absolutely. Um, yeah, like I said, um, I was never, I never believed people. You're going to have critics. Um, I had critics when I played Burn. They told me the same thing. It was self-operating, yada, yada. Um, you know, yeah. people don't like playing against certain archetypes, so they like trying to, I guess, like, try to devalue what the deck is. And honestly, and like, it happens. It, sure, like, Burn is definitely more self-operating than other decks. It obviously still has plenty of decisions. At the end of the day, like, there are times where... You just make meta calls in meta games too. Like when mm-hmm. we played, um, when we played Boggles in the the modern Lotus Box one uh, K event, we weren't playing it because the deck was like super busted or whatever. We played right. it because we thought it had a great matchup with the best deck at the time, yeah. which was that red black deck. Yep, and it did. It had a very very good matchup with that deck, and I got paired against that deck three or four times in the tournament every time i ran into an opponent they would message me and be like i really didn't want to play against you <laughs> yeah like, no I'm like yeah i know you didn't want to play that's, that's, that's yeah. why i play the deck and um but yeah. another thing that people um i think whenever whenever i'm watching someone play dredge or i'm i'm in a discord call playing dredge um <clears throat> the um one thing that i think is is really interesting is sideboarding with dredge Ooh, sideboarding. that's not easy no. at all that's, that was the biggest issue I had, remember, I told you that I did very poorly at the beginning. It's because I didn't actually know how to properly sideboard. It's hard. Um, it's not. Sideboarding with dredge, yeah. like in, in the blind, with, especially if you don't know dredge. If you don't know, you haven't used any resources to learn. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have a clue. Dredging is hard because like, there's so many things. That you, and over sideboarding is so easy with that deck. Yeah. yeah. That's, true. that's the, that's the, the biggest problem with, new, with the new, new dredge players. Because... 
For example, the, there is a matchup when your Lighty Cax will be good and your Ancient Cax will be good. An opponent can have some form of uh, Gap Digger's Cages, so I will also pack Nature's Claims and so on and so on, and suddenly your deck does not work. Yeah. Mm, and that's a problem. Like, uh, I also want to want to return to, to this statement that people want to devaluate the deck. That's kind, uh, kind of... Like, I, uh, I hate quite often that, for example, yeah, Storm is a brain, brain that's dead because you played the same repetitive thing or Dredge is boring and easy to play. But every uh, player who, who tells this type of things, uh, he just, uh, sorry, if I just uh, don't want to accept that the deck is good and challenging yeah. and they don't want to learn. And that's for me uh, is the, the scariest thing. Because when you say, yeah, throne, got his territory, throne, and so on. Uh, you don't, uh, you you just can't accept that maybe you could do something differently to to play around the, this territory throne, or maybe to try to deny it, on, or maybe to change your build to have a, a better chances to to fight it. Mm -hmm. And saying, yeah, this deck is self-operating and easy. Um, in my opinion shouldn't happen in 2020 because like obviously even bubbles are very easy to play but uh, there are still decisions for example they want to play around uh, around uh, this enchant effect yeah. to play your table corner on turn three exactly. or, mm -hmm. or later yeah i remember or do you want to, to split your auras to two creatures to have better blocking actions because eventually you will throw your coronet to take over the game and so on and so on so uh, so i try to avoid this type of conversations that something is self like out of i think it's self there right. are some easy easier decks to play and some harder ones i think the rush is one of the hardest mm -hmm. but still even with your green throw like i think green throw is the best example if you you, you see so big difference be between the green Tron player playing like 100% of the deck and uh, like 20, uh, 12 years uh, kid who, who tries the deck for the first time. Yeah. There's so much, so much difference in, in play style, in sideboarding, in, in reading the game yeah. also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, I completely agree, and um, like I said, um, I get it mostly, like, you you can tell, like, new players will say, because it has to be frustrating, because especially, I can understand, I've been on the other side of these kind of style decks, like, you're playing against combo, dredge, things like that, and it's frustrating, and your frustrations get the best of you, but at the end of the day, like, I, I don't think none of it's true, um, like, every deck is hard in its own mind, like I said, but we were just saying, boggles is hard, because there's, you gotta still be making the right decisions, yeah. Make, making the right plays or you're probably not going to do well long term yep. you might get lucky in trying to do the self-operating thing but if you're not playing well like it's just gonna not do it like like i said if it was so self-operating like i wouldn't have had issues at the beginning of when i started playing dredge i would have instantly start winning but that's not how magic is yeah and i agree that isn't the mindset you should have in 2020 but i still hear it and stuff and there's a difference between like a buddy's jokingly with you, uh, like joking with you, and then you actually your opponent's like super frustrated and tells you that. And I've had that at GPs opens and stuff where yeah, people yeah. will just be like, "Yeah, that's a self-operating deck. Doesn't take much skill to win with it." And I'm not the kind of person like engage too much into that, so I just like I shake it off and I just tell them good luck in the <laughs> rest of the event and like just yeah. end it there. <laughs> it's like my way of doing. It. I'm not here to argue with anybody. Like I can get. I know how it is to be frustrated at games. Yeah. Like, we're all here for the same reason. I, I don't think it's the right way to take your frustrations out, but, you know, to everybody's own, I guess yeah. I'm going to say about it. I suppose it. that's one thing about, uh, one nice thing about online magic is you never oh. have to deal with people's oh, have you had, actual, like, well, I've had a couple people message me a little angry or whatever, but those are so easy to ignore. Yeah, well... <laughs> like, <laughs> It's funny because actually on a moto, I've always had my um, chat disabled because yeah. I don't think having your chat enabled is actually healthy because people on there are very vulgar and rude and I don't really have time for that. Especially when I'm actually, like, we, we do videos and stuff for our YouTube page. Yeah. And I don't want our YouTube page to have, have any people nonsense, yeah. ha having all these anger people on there. Like, That's fair. I, 
I don't have that. Yeah. I've, I've played against friends and stuff on there. We'll just personal message each other. Yeah. The rest of the people, I don't do it because I don't want to talk to you. I do yeah. it because I don't want to talk to the people that are so angry. Yeah, yeah, for like, sure. For no reason. Avoids a lot of issues, for sure. Yeah. It's just, just ain't worth it. So it's like, there'd be times I'd be playing on Moto when I was grinding Burn for Hogak Summer, and I would go turn one Gaul guy, and people are just instantly getting so mad at me. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. guys, this ain't even the close to the best deck in the format. And you're getting so mad. Yeah, like, yeah. It's it's just funny. Um, but no, I want yeah, to talk. Just... Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like I I have a like at the Grand Prix when I when I was able to play them. Mm-hmm. Uh, before COVID, uh, I like I am I have the opposite direction to to these salty players. Uh, if I say that yeah, that is brainless and so on. Like the only thing I'm I'm talking about is yeah I was very lucky and like I I tried to to take their nar- narration and convince them that it was really all about luck <laughs> and, <laughs> and not not about that they they messed with like three three different things in the game yeah, uh, that's yeah. quite funny because like people are like if they if they if you tell them that uh, it was luck. They are, they are more calm, I think. That's fair. Yeah. So, so it's probably easier to overcome these type of situations. That's fair. Yeah, no. For, for sure. I know how I avoid a lot of um drama and stuff at events now. Like, cause I used to say um good game after every game, win or lose. And I, I was told by some actual, uh, some better players than myself um, that, like, hey, it, people can take that as actually rude if you say good games after you win. Um, it's people think it's like a rubbing. So now my favorite thing to say now when I'm playing, I always say thanks for the games. My, sure, it's a good, good like middle neutral like saying. And so <laughs> I try to be as neutral because I'm not trying to make anybody mad. Like, yeah, for sure. Like it's hard because especially now that I'm like we're on a team together here in the states and we're doing all this kind of stuff. I'm not trying to have any bad reps by like yeah. oh. Do you yeah, know this Larry yeah. guy? He's such a tool when he's yeah, at yeah. Magic tournaments. Definitely like, don't want that. No. So. So. Yeah, magic, magic in 2020 is a minefield. Like talking between like Magic as a game is cool, but talking uh, like it's so easy to make someone angry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Offend to, somebody. For example, so easy to uh, let someone tell you that you are a salty boy. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> or or you are you are uh, a thief or or whatever. Yeah. So, so so it's it's hard to it's it's hard to find uh, good neutral words. Uh, for all, all occasions. Yep. No, I agree with that. Um, and like I said, I wanted to talk a little bit about your Patreon because, like I said, when I first started um getting into um ma- like the dredge mechanic, not magic in general, but the dredge in general, um, I struggled and I was redirected. I was not redirected, but directed to your Patreon. And the Patreon, just saying, just because you're on the show, like I, I think I messaged you like when I first like reached out to you, like. Your Patreon, like, all the information that you provided, like, really helped me, um, progress, like, in a positive fashion to be able to do well with George. And it eventually led me to, um, of course, I had to play the deck, but those resources, like, the deck guides, all the in-depth, um, information provided gave me the, um, tools needed to actually win that PTQ and yeah. go to my first PT. Yeah. Um, and then, like, the big question is, like, what gave you the idea to actually start start doing the patreon like and the way you do your patreon mainly because i i get the reason to do patreons but the way you do your patreon is so different like for example i i'm a part of different patreons because yeah. like they have deck guides and it's like all right take this out put this <coughs> in but yours is so much different you're like take this out here's why yeah take this add this here's why yeah here's the cyborg cards that you don't want to play because they're trapped. yeah that that was my that was really my favorite thing when you when you showed me um sodex uh guide is all the just the nor the stuff that you normally don't see in in guides stuff that i wouldn't even think of like Sideboard cards that I'm not playing this week. Here's why I'm not playing them. Here's why you probably shouldn't play them as well. But then he also includes other information. Like if the metagame looks like this where you are though, maybe you should consider playing it. Like he, there's just so yeah. much details. Yeah. And I, I'm not the best um, judge because I've only, I don't usually look at most Patreons. I'm now I'm like part of a couple of them just because of the tournaments and stuff, but I still don't read them that much. Right. Um, yeah, just the information was, was awesome. It was so, so in depth. So much stuff there. 
Um, so yeah, t- talk to us a little bit about that, Sodak. Your the the Patreon is really so, awesome, man. So so f- first, thanks for your good words. And I will start uh, why I decided to to start my Patreon because it's kind of a funny story. Uh, I I was a, like I like I said uh, earlier. Uh, I was uh, MTGO close to full time grinder, and mm-hmm. I was playing like ninety five percent of this time. I was playing with Edge. So I got the knowledge uh, because if I had like stable 65 plus percent win rate, generally speaking uh, above this, like close to 68, 70 percent, uh, like between like two years, uh, mm-hmm. I felt that it's, it's good enough to tell that I'm, I know something about. And um, I also uh, like some players started to, to write me after my another modern challenge top eight. Like I think that now I have sixteen modern challenge top eights and thirteen of them are with Dredge. Yeah. Something like this. Like I have one with Hogak and two with Hypnosiums. Okay. And like and some other PTQs, like probably four or five PTQs or or other premier events uh, top eights, but I haven't won the one online. I, I want two PTQs uh, with Dredge in paper in Brussels and in Krakow. Okay. So uh, so I, I had the knowledge, but also uh, players were asking me in private chat, for example, on Discord or on Facebook um, about my decisions in, for example, deck building or how I'm playing this type of hands or, or should I mulligan or should I keep and so on and so on. And that's the funny thing. It took me so much time to, to respond to all of these players because yeah. like if someone is asking uh, for something and it's not rude uh, and and he just wants to get an information like i was trying to to tell what i think about and for example sometimes I, it took me like three hours a day <laughs> yeah as opposed to all of this it was like too much of of this dredge dredge uh, content also I, I started streaming uh mostly because of fun because my my roommate uh, was a streamer okay. uh, for a time. He had a camera uh, with microphone. I said, yeah, maybe, maybe I should try mm. F- at first to, to have some laughs with my Polish friends. Uh-huh. Uh, and later, like people uh, realized that yeah, this is this Sodek who made another top eight, and he's streaming. So I started to ask questions on my uh, on my Twitch chat. Yep. It was even more irritating, so I decided <laughs> to write a guide. And like yeah. it, it was much much shorter than than what what you you can see now. But it was a guide, and like when someone was asking a question and I knew that it was a guide, I would just ask send a link, <laughs> just to just to to not waste my time to to write all, over and over the same. Yeah, makes sense. Because for example, for example, your uh, like it was in Creeping Chill era. Uh, yeah, my, like the, very often uh, people were asking about why I'm not playing free conflagrates because before Creeping Chill, the deck was all about conflagrates. Mm-hmm. If the conflagrate was good, the rest was good. And after Creeping Chill happened, something needed to be cut. And you couldn't cut payoff cards. Like yeah. there was only 12 of them, so not that much. Uh, there was uh, 12 treasures to an, an others, and I was like, okay, they're untouchable. I don't want to cut lands, so I need to cut something. And Conflagrate was the only cut to, to do. That makes sense. Yeah, it makes and, sense. And like, and like, I was writing this, this what I what I thought just uh, a second ago, like easy 15 times. Easy. <laughs> why I cut my my one Conflagrate? That was uh, the most, for me, that, that was kind of obvious why. But yeah. many players were asking it about it and uh, there are many other smaller questions um, like why this mana base why you we play one one games one one games on mine one city on plus split and i was saying yeah it's a uh, like both cards have these pros and cons and if you play one of them each uh, it's uh, it's like to 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 use the what's the best in them and uh, avoid the worst path the war, sorry, avoid wars parts, uh, and so on and so on. And like, like, I would probably do this more and like just send this guide, but uh, there's a 
<laughs> even funnier story. Thank you, Mizors of the Coast, for cancelling uh, plane tickets for buying uh, for winning PTQs. Because suddenly I had to earn money for for my fair, for my first uh, pro tour event in America. I was playing in Richmond. Okay. In Okoera, <laughs> miserable experience. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did like flights from Poland to United States aren't very, very cheap. Makes sense. And like I, I need to start like making more money because I need to, to, to buy them. So my friend asked me, like, you are streaming from time to time, you are writing about it, so maybe you try to do it more seriously. I say, yeah, maybe this is this an idea. I'm playing close to full time. I, I feel I'm, I'm good at it. Yeah. So why not? So I, I wrote my first guide. I was like, yeah, maybe <laughs> it, will, it will fire up. And like, uh, like it, uh, it was far above my expectations. That so many people were were ready to, to pay me to to to, to check what uh, um, I was trying to, to to tell about about this one one archetype in in one format. But that was very like I I had a very big boost to to, to write more to to steam more and so on and so on. Yeah. So when I started to like that, that was uh, quite. Uh, like I started my Patreon a year, like 14 months ago. So like two months later, the Hogak summer happened. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I started, started to write about Hogak. When Bans came, I started to write about how to react to Bans. I started to, uh, I was writing about how to find the best dredge list post uh, uh, post Bans. Like, yep. uh, it wasn't very easy. Like like obviously, if you if you see that. This list was uh, to add forgotten case and add in solid neonates instead of fatal lootings. Like that was an easy, easy story. But I was testing this blue version. I was testing like more flashback cards, for example, radical idea because jump started to work really well with the mechanic. Yeah. Um, I was testing uh, all in builds without uh, green mana at all, and so on and so on. So it was uh, a long journey for me. To, to find the, the best possible build. Then Grumpy building up happened, Grumpy Grant happened. Uh, like more more knowledge was accomplished. Like uh, obviously like players were very uh, maybe differently. I, I got a very positive feedback from from my patrons that they very like my work. So I decided to to try to go maybe not full time on just writing but to focus more on this. And I started to write also articles about dredge theory, for example, dredge sideboard, not only guide, but dredge sideboarding, keep or mull, uh, how to react to to soft hate, and so on and so on. And uh, I'm the type of person who, if you if starts doing something, I want to do it the best I can. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm trying to write my my guide. I want my guide to be the best guide available on Dredge. Yeah. For example, there was a, a moment when probably Andrea Mengucci wrote a guide on Channel Fireball about Dredge. I was like, yeah, <laughs> my Dredge career is over. And then later I I, I, uh, I read what Mengucci um, was writing about uh, about Dredge. And don't get me wrong, Andrea Mengucci is a great player and so on. But like the level of uh, Depth, I would say. Uh, well, maybe you can help it. The level of uh, how 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 accurate it was, or how deep it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. how deep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, forgot the for, for those. So <laughs> You're good. The man. level of uh, like how my that my guide was much deeper. Like, obviously, my guide has like twenty five pages <laughs> right now. So. Yes. Dude, okay. it's so, so maybe, good, maybe, man. Maybe it's that's so why good. it's it, that deep. But like I was like, okay, so my guide is still the best. <laughs> so yeah, so man. Like, like now, right now, I'm very proud of what I I already did. Like I uh, already wrote a small book, like more than 100 pages wow. uh, about dredge. That is and really now, sweet. And, and I want I want to I want to write more. I want I have some more ideas about uh, about other other aspects of playing. Yeah. Uh, I think like the 
best ideas are very hard to write about. For example, how to read the game, how yeah. to read if opponent has Ravnus trap or not, for example, yep. because it's do it's doable. Or for example, uh, how to mm, maybe the, the bigger contest. Uh, Versus different players, I tend to side out a little bit differently. For example, if I see that my opponent is coming scavenging plus turn two, no matter what, I'm uh, I'm more convinced to side in all lighting access. But if I see that my opponent wants to sandpack his schools and wait to make an e immediate value, yeah, my lighting access aren't that good anymore. So these are the informations which. I know from my MTG grinding and I, I just feel them and I know they happen. Sure. But it's very hard to, to write about them because they are so specific on the situation yeah. that it's hard to build a whole story around it in a, a friendly and cool way to tell this knowledge to, to other players. Yeah. yeah. So I have some ideas to, to, to do more stuff. So I still. <laughs> I'm mobilizing myself to stream more, but I like I had my finals to write. I had my PT arena than PT finals right now. So so maybe <laughs> like month or two, I I will be able to to say that I I'm a streamer streamer finally. So for example, stream two or three times a week. Mm -hmm. That would be an, an accomplishment for me. <laughs> Sweet man. <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta definitely put the focus on the finals because it's a very oh, yeah, big tournament. Obviously. Um, well, I was going to ask you this earlier, um, now that it got brought up. You, you topped eight the PT um, with Reclamation, and you've won challenges with Dredge. Which do you consider a bigger accomplishment for you? Hmm. Uh, that's like, like, if you compare one modern challenge to one top eight PT, obviously your your top eight players to Ravina 4 will be more important. Yep. But uh, from my perspective, uh, I... Uh, like. It's quite hard to tell these things about myself, but for example, if I see McQueen Sauce winning, uh, being on, in the final of Pro Tour Arena, uh, Players Tour Arena 4, that's obviously a great result. Yeah. But if you see how McQueen Sauce is playing over and over and again on Magic Online, yep. and, and he's winning over and over again yep. in Pioneer and in Modern, yep. with his blue control, control games, and he's doing this not once or twice, but he has countless very good results yes. you don't have to win something but if you are, co are consistently in top eight yep. that means that your idea it, it, it wasn't a, a, a one tick pony that yep. that you, what you did this top eight that if you are doing something 10th time or like 12th time maybe not in a row but in like for example in one year you have your 10 modern challenge top eights yeah that means that you are consistent, yeah. and that means that you are a, a, a good player, yep. that you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. So, so about your question, I think that if we compare one tournament, obviously Arena will be more important, and obviously it's very important for me, but uh, but I feel that for me as a Magic player, my consistency in, in, uh, in online events on Magic Online uh, is more important and more defying. Yeah. For, for for my fans, if I can say that. Yeah. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense. I know. Um, me personally, I think a Magic Online events are very tough because like I did some like PTQs and stuff on there, and they're like 10, 11 round tournaments. Like. Yeah, yeah. They're they're intense on Magic Online. Yeah, they're they need um, business. For challenges. Sure. I think the recent modern one. I think somebody posted was like four hundred players or something yeah. like that. Like. Yeah. They're they're quite the haul though, like and doing well and let alone winning those many challenges as you mentioned is very impressive. Yeah. And you said you did a lot of um like league grinding. Um, did you, did you ever like become or get close to like being trophy leaders, or is that something you never tried to achieve? Like three seasons when I when I played full time and I had I was once I was second one I was uh, second one I was third. And I had like five positions. I was fifth in, in the first one. Okay. So, so, but you know, leagues nowadays aren't very good because you have these two systems. You have leagues, which is like some grinders are doing them. And the second one is a prelims, a preliminary events yeah. plus PTQs like plus challenges. For example, right now I'm not playing leagues anymore. Like from time to time or when I'm streaming, leagues are fun. But uh, I want to, uh, to top 
played bigger tournaments, like yeah. five O in the league or even ten O in the league. Doesn't matter if you can't uh, top eight uh, Modern Challenge in three months, for example. Like no. I, I, my, I'm focusing on on bigger tournaments because uh, the they are more important as a player to me. Like, like I'm playing to win big tournaments as the big, the best thing ever. Yeah. Not another league because if you if you lose your league, you can just start another one and whatever. If you lose your winning in to, to like 200 player tournament, you can feel it. Yeah, <laughs> that, that it, it was something. You so, do the, oh, sorry, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I was just wondering if you um, did those preliminary events, the newer ones that just started coming out. Uh, like right, right now, like last close to two months, uh, I played more standard than uh, than modern. So yeah. So now I'm I wasn't playing. Also in companion era, I like dress was very badly positioned. So I was playing Hypnosis and Amulet Titan, and they are both fine, but they are not uh, on the fun level uh, stretch. Yeah. So right. I wasn't playing it much. Also, I had to play Mass Effect all three chapters, you know, mm -hmm. because when you start the first one, you need to play a second and third one. Yep. So, uh, so I also and also wrote my final work exactly in this configuration. I start, I ended Mass Effect, then I started. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Priorities. So. Yep. Uh, so yeah, now I'm not playing as much as I was uh, playing when I was a grinder. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I don't have like for example, I'm not that high on leak uh, on uh, leak in on Magic Online. Makes but sense. on the other hand, it for me it's quite similar to what sports is all about. For example, if Roger Federer. Yep. Roger is probably the best the best thing to describe this. If you compare Roger Federer to the newer tennis player, yep. the newer tennis player, for example, is 16 or 18 years old, uh, he needs to work really hard to achieve the level of Roger Federer. Yeah. But Roger Federer, if uh, he's playing so well for so many years, all he needs to do, he's in top right now. Like he, he's in his top shape, in my opinion. Like it will be really hard to to be even like for him to be even better when, when he is already. So he don't need to be better than himself from yesterday. He needs to be as good. So if you compare these two magic players, for example, Paolo Victor Damotarosa, he said that like uh, uh, now he's not playing magic that much. Yeah. Like he used to play when he was much younger. But all these pro players aren't playing that much because uh, once you learn how this game works and uh, how to read the game, I think it's the most underrated skill in Magic. How yeah, to, yeah. based on limited information, read what an opponent's hand, what opponent is representing, and so on and so on. So this, th if you play it a lot earlier and you learn this, you don't need to play as much, and yet you can still go to your big tournament after some preparation, but not as as super grindy as, as hard as like me three years ago, and still do well in your tournament. For example, right now, I'm not playing that many leagues. Uh, I'm playing my trainings. Uh, if I have time, if I don't have to write or coach uh, anyone. Uh, uh, and I still can make my top eights. And I can still adapt to, to new environments. Yeah. And I, I still read the meta game. Like, once you learn how to, how to do this, it's quite easy to keep up. Yeah. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, no, that that does. And like I said, um, those kind of things. Um, the other question that I had that was um very big, like, if what would you um suggest or um like some like basic tips you would give for like new players to the dredge like deck in general? Because I know you've done like exceptionally well with all your challenges and stuff like that. Um, what what is some basic like um was it like suggestions you would give them that could actually help them with um their success the long long term? Um, are you asking about magic online or magic in general? Uh, just in general, I yeah. think. Yeah, in just general. Yeah. In general, I think that the most important thing to do is to to learn how to announce triggers. It sounds very stupid, but like many newer players are forgetting about their narcomiba, their creeping children, and so on. Okay. So, for example, when I'm playing magic, I talk all the time. Like, say, I dredge five trigger, dredge five triggers and so on 
fully resolve and fully drop and make a direct reunion, then triggers on the stack and I am doing everything what I can to how MTGO would work. Yep. So from this from this gaming perspective, it, uh, this would, would be my advice. From gameplay, um, play a lot. <laughs> That's like it's really hard to learn magic only from uh, from reading articles, for example. As yeah. Obviously, you need to have your base knowledge. For example, you you need to know to not oversight. You need to know who is the beta in the matchup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You need to know uh, like how your your deck works. Once again, sounds stupid, but some players uh, like also. Like all the time, fully commit their boards to obvious amir of the gods, and that's sad. Like, if you have, for example, three creatures, you don't need to dredge hard. Opponent needs to deal with these cre- three creatures because they will kill them yep. eventually. So, like, these are very small things that you won't learn unless you play. Play a lot. Yep. Make, make mistakes. Okay, that's a game you can make mistakes, but learn from them. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, like, I also learned a lot by watching my my replays. For example, when I uh, I played a game and I, uh, I lost and I felt that I could do something better, I I, I was uh, watching a replay on Magic Online yep. and I was trying to find when I made a mistake. Okay. Obviously, like with no information, it's easier to, to say what was played wrong, but uh, I learned a lot. From, from this type of position. That makes sense. Yeah, no, that's actually good. I know um, I would do that a little bit because I actually learned on Magic Online you could re-watch your games yep. um, without actually recording, which I think is a really cool um, aspect sure. they got on it, yeah. um, which I wish Arena actually had more of because going back to watch it, like say you were in top eight of an event or you were like, you lost your winning in for top eight, or even if you just like went oh three 3 like drop or something, you'd be like, okay, what what happened? Was there anything I could have did to address that? Yeah. It's kind of like if you um have like like a sports team, for example, whether it be soccer, football, whatever. You you spend time during yeah. the week watching tape. Yeah. And yeah. I know back exactly. yeah back when I was grinding, um, not only would I like play myself, but I'd actually watch other players play too because I was like, I know I'm not nowhere close to great. Like I think I'm decent at best. So watching these players who are way better than I am is always a pot. I and mean, that's why it's so awesome that we have all these streamers because that's just like unlimited information and knowledge that you can be able to obtain at this time. Yep, sure. Yeah, that, that's, that's all, all very important. Yeah. Yep. But but anyway, Sodek, thanks thanks a ton for, for taking time out of your super busy week to, to join us on our show, man. We really appreciate that. That was super awesome of you. Yeah, thank, thank you for your uh, for, for bringing me to, to your podcast it was really, really fun to, to talk with you yep um, and um mo- most players can follow you on twitter i know and then they can i'm gonna go ahead and um in our description on the video and stuff i'm gonna make sure to throw a link to your patreon for anybody that's trying to learn learn the dredge archetype i want them to actually resource out to you subscribe to your patreon because i'm telling you from personal experience you will gain so much like information oh, alone my. that will help you improve yeah, crazy good info um, for sure the, do you want us to? Would you like us to link your Facebook, or do you like to keep Facebook more of for private matters? It's on the MTG Facebook side, but I'm not uh, very good at social media, to be honest, and I'm not Fair updating enough. it very often. So not, not I'm, I'm working fully on Twitter and on my Patreon. Makes and sense. to to one of you who are listening to this and are not convinced to uh, to be my patron, or or you have some questions but not 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 feel that you need this Patreon, just write me on Twitter and I'll try to help you. <laughs> cool. Oh, yeah. uh, or even you, you can you can find me on, on Facebook and write. Like uh, I was doing it for last more than three years, so so I can help more of you uh, in the same apps. Yeah, but um, like I said, you're a super um, friendly, engaging person, so it's awesome that you, you know, show. We appreciate what you do for the Patreon and the, and just the community in general. And, we do, um, at least I know, I hope that you do really well at the PT Finals. I know we got you, a couple um, local guys that are going to be in it, so hoping everyone we know does well. Like, it's going to be interesting. Hopefully, um, 
your um, four color, I believe you said was, um, does what, yeah. it, what it's supposed to do. I hope you avoid mono white so you don't have to deal with that matchup. <laughs> um, let the pairing lottery yeah. be in your favor. Um, uh, thanks. And yeah. to all, all listeners to this podcast, watch Pro Tour Finals. If you like good magic, it won't be the it won't be a better place to watch the h- highest level magic. Even your t- timber reclamation mirrors, which you would maybe think that they are boring, but they are not, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, if someone, like the best players in the world are playing, they can even play the most boring matchup, but it still be, will be very interesting to watch. Yeah, right. Because of their level. So, so just tune uh, Pro Tour Finals on Twitch. Magic probably will, will have uh, with their official type and just watch and learn. Yeah, cool. no, I 100% agree. Absolutely. It's going to be some high-level talent this yep. weekend. I'm looking forward. I'm going to catch some of it myself. Yep. Like, I'm looking forward. Um, I don't play much standard right now myself because, you know, I've, I've played against a Tefiri and this uh, well, quite a few times now that I just need my little mental break and play <laughs> some of my... Modern's my favorite format, so I'm going to yeah. start digging back into that format. Um, but no, so like, uh, like I said, we want to thank you once again for uh, joining us. Um, we want to be respectful of your time. Like I said, and good luck this weekend. Oh, thank you. Uh, you are welcome. Right, we will catch you later, <laughs> my See friend. You See ya. But no, that was awesome to speak with him, Sodek. He's just an awesome guy in general. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, Super knowledgeable. I really enjoyed all of that. A lot of very new information for yeah, me. Especially since you don't play a lot of dredge. Right, I don't like, play much dredge at all. Um, and when I do play those kind of decks, I usually am pretty lost when it comes to sideboarding specifically, which yeah, is why I brought up hard. sideboarding. I'm, I am comfortable with my yeah. sideboarding now where I don't actually use his guide anymore. I read yeah. his stuff and I get the basic yeah, information. Yeah. At this point, like I can actually know how to sideboard. Like Learning the sideboard was so difficult. It's a different kind of magic. Oh, 100%. Well, it's just a really, it's just very different. Like, you, you know, I'm quite good at sideboarding with aggro decks mid-range decks control decks i'm fine with but yeah com- combo decks are just a whole different animal man and it's really, it really it's really cool um getting some insight into the deck and and stuff like that knowing your role in matchups obviously always really important but yeah it's so cool that he took time out of his definitely very busy week to especially with the pd finals yeah no that's crazy i forgot that that was even a thing yeah that's like yeah, we were originally supposed because i'm um, right now we're recording and it's thursday yeah thursday currently yeah, it's thursday right now we we're gonna originally record on wednesdays like we normally do but he was like he didn't get back because there was only like five hours left to get his list. Or yeah. He said he was working with Canister, and I was like, you know what? Yeah, just take your time. I was time. like, because he was like, hey, I can stop and do your podcast. I was like, no, actually, focus on that. We'll meet up tomorrow. Yeah, it's no. perfectly fine. Yeah, totally. Um, and when this is actually launched, it's going to be Friday. I'm not <laughs> sure what time it is yeah. when everybody's listening, but... I'm, it's going to be like a day out from it. I know he's probably going to be jamming more yeah. games just to get more reps yeah. in, I would imagine. So, because where <laughs> he is, um, it's like 9 p.m. right now. So, I imagine he still has a lot of time left in his day. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm hoping he does well along with everybody that we oh, know. Yeah, like, definitely. Like, we have like Noah Strassler is going to be in yep. it, which I hope he does well. Raja Suleiman. Oh, Raja's in it? Raja's I wasn't in the, it. Oh, he did do quite well he at did. the um, yep. one at the Phoenix. Yep. Yep, a, so yeah, he's in all about him. Um, and, uh, yeah, you know, uh, obviously we hope all these people do well, and uh, hopefully Sodak doesn't run into it, but I'm actually hoping that White Deck puts up a decent performance because next week we have a special guest, yes. uh, very similar to Chase Masters. When Chase came on, we talked about uh, White Death and Taxes decks. Uh, when um, <clears throat> our guest comes on next week, we're going to focus on White Aggro decks, um, um, and no, whoa, 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 whoa! Not just white aggro decks. We did a white episode. We're gonna talk about our, uh, also the art type. I'm a big fan of, and that's fern. Fern, yeah. Because I, like <clears throat> I said, my summer, my um, turnaround summer last year came all from burn. Absolutely. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to talking some burn. Yep. Um, I'm gonna probably debate John a little bit on some of the things he wants to do because you know I. We all have our own opinions, but we have a lot of similarities because I actually, I use this stuff as resources at the very beginning because he was the Burn SCG guy, yep. and he did quite well with Burn on the in tour. In fact, as well, really uh, yep. good, good He was on, player. when he teamed with me. He and, knows his aggro decks. Yeah, when me and so. James Johnson teamed with him, he played Infect, and he played Infect really well. Yep. Um, 
Like I said, we would have did exceptionally well in that tournament, not for James. But that's <laughs> a topic for another time. <laughs> yeah, that's no. a topic for the next time James comes no, on I'm the show. No, I'm looking forward to it. And then um, next week we'll talk about that. Yeah. We'll, we'll recap the PP Finals. We'll do all that good stuff. And we'll talk a little bit. Um, I don't know when. Um, what is the date going to be for next week? Next Wednesday. Ooh, probably we're going to talk about. We'll talk more about the arena open and some historic as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Because we need to talk. Because next week is on yeah. the first. We'll start doing some that. videos and cool. some some stuff with historic. Um, yep. Definitely interested to play some of those decks. See some of those decks. I know Goblins is doing really well from what it I sounds like. I heard Goblins like. is the most busted deck right it now. It is very busted. Yep. Um, you either need to play Goblins. You better have a plan to beat very them. Good, good plan. Yeah. Um, Everybody's talking about the, we need bands in Historic, and I think that comes from laziness, personally. Yeah, it's too early. Like, it's the literally been The set's been out a for week. a few days. Yeah, like, yeah, like we haven't even played the format yet, because we're still trying to get cards from the Jumpstart event without exactly. using wild cards. Like, yeah, no, uh, we'll we'll discuss more of that next week yeah. when we delve into the format, but, but I'm gonna, sure there are some decks that can yeah. tussle with goblins. Yeah, I'm sure we can figure something out. But we'll wrap this up. Um, like I said, um, we had Sodic was an awesome guest this week. Um, I'm Larry. This is Steven. This is Talk and Swish. And yep. we will catch you next week. See you next time.